So knowing that dotting a vector with itself measures its length, in other words, that u dotted with u is, well, not the length, but the length squared. So u dot u is the norm or magnitude of u squared. And knowing that it's distributive, so that u dotted with um, v plus w equals u dot v plus u dot w, um, we can actually find out something else about what the dot product measures. Imagine um, we have a triangle here. I want to remind you of something called the law of cosines. If we have um, an angle in a triangle, and we've got one side, let's call this side A, and this side B, and this side C. You learn in trigonometry the law of cosines, which says that um, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times the cosine of the angle in between. So it's kind of like a special case of the Pythagorean theorem because if the angle theta was 90 degrees, then C would be the hypotenuse of a right triangle and the cosine of 90 degrees is zero, and so this term would disappear, and you'd have the usual Pythagorean theorem. So it's like a version of the Pythagorean theorem that's specialized to work even when um, the angle isn't 90 degrees, or you could think of it that way anyway. The Pythagorean theorem is just a special case of it. It relates the sides um, to it relates the sides to the cosine of a particular angle. Now, what that has to do with vectors is this: if we have vector u, so let's let this be vector u, and this be vector v, so this whole side here is a vector, then we could measure two vectors lie in a plane, even if they're in three-dimensional space, they both lie in a plane, and so we could measure the angle between them. I guess you could argue that there could be an angle outside here, but that one would be more than 180 degrees. So we'll just measure the one that's between 0 and 180 between these two vectors. So we also know from what we learned about subtraction that when you put um, two vectors tail to tail, then this vector is the difference. If I think about it as u minus v, then um, I draw the vector from the head of the one I'm subtracting to the head of the one I'm subtracting from. So this is a vector as well. This is the vector u minus v. Now, we can apply the law of cosines in this case because the length of this side is going to be the length of u. So, and the length of this side will be the length of v. And the length of this side will be the length of u minus v. So if we look at the law of cosines, remember it said that um, c squared, the side opposite the angle here, um, that would be length of u minus v right, squared would be equal to the length of u squared plus the length of v squared minus 2 times the length of u times the length of v times the cosine of the angle in between them. So we have c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. That's just the law of that's just the law of um, cosines here. Now, the length of u minus v could actually, if, since we mean the length squared, we could actually find that from the dot product. So the length of u minus v squared, remember that's um, u minus v dotted with u minus v. We also know that the dot product is distributed, so we get the link, we get u dot u and when we distribute, then we get minus u dot v, and then minus v dot u, although we noted before that the dot product is commutative, so that's the same thing as v dot u is the same thing as u dot v, and um, minus v dot minus v would be plus v dot v. Hmm. Which means looking at this, we need the, the length of um, the norm of u squared, it's at, the norm of u minus v, we need the, the square of the length of u minus v. That's actually the length of u squared minus 2 u dot v plus the length of v squared. So going back over here to the law of cosines, we could replace this length of u minus v squared by the length of u squared. 
minus 2 times u dot v plus the length, I missed my length there, plus the length of v squared equals what we have on the right hand side minus 2 times um, the length of u times the length of v times the cosine of the angle in between. Okay. Notice that there's a u squared on both sides, a length of u squared, and there's a length of v squared on both sides. So we're left with negative 2 times u dot v is equal to um, negative 2 times the length of u times the length of v times the cosine of the angle in between them. If I divide both sides by negative 2, I get that the dot product u dot v is actually measuring something that we can visualize. It's measuring the length of u times the length of v times the cosine of the angle in between them. So in a sense, when you calculate u dot u, you're finding something out about the length of u and v and the, and the cosine of the angle in between them. Also note, if, if u dot v turns out to be 0 and these two numbers are not 0, so in other words u and v both have some length, then the only way that could happen would be is if the cosine is 0. So if you have two vectors that have some length and their dot product is 0, so if u dot v equals 0 and neither one of these is the 0 vector, then you know that the cosine of the angle in between them is 0. But the cosine is only 0 when the angle is pi over 2 or 90 degrees. And so if u dot v equals 0, the vectors are perpendicular. Or another word we use for that is that they're orthogonal. Hmm. So the dot product gives us a quick way to check and see if two vectors are perpendicular. If the dot product turns out to be 0, we know that the two vectors are perpendicular. And I guess you've got to think about that, that case. If one of the vectors happens to be the 0 vector, that could happen too. So Let's look at an example.